the testing workshop. While it is not really a major location, this small underground facility is deeply linked with some of the interesting storylines hidden behind the smoke screen that is the zone, mainly the development of the legendary Gauss rifle. Hello stalkers and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. In this video, we will take a look at this testing workshop, as well as the secret history of the Gauss gun. Obviously, there will be major spoilers, and I would also like to say that this video is part of a series, so I suggest you go watch the previous episodes if you haven't already. Link to the playlist in the description. And now, let's talk about the workshop. Sure, the place is located on the area of Zaton, but the facility is actually a secondary station of the much bigger Jupiter factory, which is about a kilometer away. Not much is known about the history of the workshop itself, but there are a lot of interesting things to say about the Jupiter plant. In fact, the buildings found in the game are an exact replica of the real-life factory of the same name, near Pripyat. So we can assume that most of the in-game history of the location is shared with its real-life counterpart. According to some sources I found online, the Jupiter factory was founded in 1980 and was the second largest employer in Pripyat, right behind the Chernobyl power plant, of course. Indeed, the factory had around 3,500 workers, and officially, it produced cassette recorders and other parts for home appliances. However, this was only a cover-up, as in reality, the factory's main purpose was to build and test military-grade components, such as semiconductors, computers, and black boxes. Apparently, these parts were designated with the name item and a number, for example, item 62, and were used in complex systems such as submarines, aircrafts, and space technologies. After the Chernobyl disaster in 1986, the factory was repurposed as a radiological laboratory for testing decontamination techniques and producing dosimetric devices. It was finally shut down in 1996 and remained abandoned since then. Obviously, all these real-life elements heavily inspired the creators of the Stalker games, who came up with their own storyline for the factory. Most likely, the events prior to the 1986 meltdown are the same but it was what happened after that changed. In the world of Stalker, the Jupiter factory did not close in 1996. On the contrary, the factory continued to work as a production complex for the secret labs operating in the zone. And one of the objects manufactured in the plant was a weapon designated Item 62, also known as the Gauss Rifle. The idea was to use electromagnetic acceleration to launch projectiles without the use of gunpowder. These guns were experimented at the testing workshop, where a giant version of the weapon was built. I believe that the electric network found above the workshop, now nicknamed the Iron Forest, was designed to receive electricity directly from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, in order to supply the gun with the enormous amount of energy required to shoot it. Indeed, while the goal was to develop a smaller version of Item 62 that could be handled by a single soldier, this endeavor turned out to be an impossible task, as the scientists could not find a compact enough source of energy. Supposedly, this led to the cancellation of the project in 2004. As you probably guessed it already, 
the story of the Gauss rifle actually does not end here. But let's take a break from the lore for a bit, shall we? So, let's go inside the testing workshop to see what interesting things we can find. Originally the facility was locked behind the blast door, but a stalker and technician named Cardan reveals that he used to work on the Gauss rifle in the workshop before the project was cancelled in 2004. It turns out that Cardan still has a magnetic keycard to access the area. This is how Major de Tyref managed to enter into the workshop during his investigation on the Gauss gun during the month of August 2012. Despite being abandoned, the workshop is not empty as it is inhabited by a number of zombies and an extremely powerful pseudo-giant. It is unknown how these creatures gained entry to the facility, but I have some theories. The first is that the main door is not the only entrance to the place. Indeed, the location features many closed doors that could lead in unknown tunnels. Also, the presence of rails and a train cart in the small workshop may be a hint that the area is connected to Jupiter via an underground railroad system. My second theory is that the monolith faction somehow placed the zombies and the pseudo-giant here as a defense mechanism for the workshop. We know that the monolith faction did visit the area because they left one of their stashes here and perhaps some of the other stuff found in the place as well. The reason why the monolithians came here is quite obvious and will be discussed later, but basically they were also interested in the Gauss rifle. Anyway, the main attraction inside the workshop is the large scale Gauss cannon and its shooting range. The target is composed of a giant vertical metallic plate placed on a train cart for adjusting the range. We can see that the weapon was able to inflict heavy damage to the plate, distorting it and even piercing some holes in it. The wall at the end of the room has some impacts as well, probably from the shots that went through. On the upper level, we find two control rooms that were used to overlook the tests. One of the rooms has a panel that might have been the firing command for the weapon. The cannon itself is quite similar to the man-sized version of item 62, but with small differences. It is fixed to the ground, does not have a scope, and is not powered by batteries but by a number of wires coming from the ceiling. There is also a cable that goes into this shaft towards the surface. Finally, in the room where the giant gun is, a thick layer of documents was abandoned. These are the technical documentation for item 62, explaining its mechanisms and other characteristics. With that information in our hands, I think it is time to continue the story of the Gauss Rifle and see how the project succeeded after all. Unfortunately, we only have small bits and pieces of info concerning this subject, so I'll try my best to put everything back together, but keep in mind that there will be some speculation. After the project was cancelled in 2004, the idea of manufacturing the Gauss rifle was abandoned for quite some time. However, it appears that the birth of the zone gave a new life to the project. Indeed, the problem of finding a compact enough energy source for the weapon was soon solved by the discovery of artifacts. It turned out that some artifacts of electrical nature were charged with tremendous quantities of energy, and such artifacts could be used to build batteries with performances never seen before. 
To the light of this new development, the Jupiter factory started to work on the Gauss rifle again. However, an order coming from a so-called central laboratory prompted the factory to transfer its entire production inside some of the secret underground labs located in the zone. We know all of this from various documents found in the factory, and we know that it happened after the zone came to be because of this specific sentence. Due to anomalous activity, transportation of item 62 over open ground is not feasible. This confirms that the factory, as well as the infamous X-Labs, did continue to run after the appearance of the zone in 2006, and the scientist there did study the artifacts. This would explain why some artifacts were stored in boxes in labs all across the zone. Anyway, the production complex was moved from Jupiter to the labs, as well as a number of already made item 62s. According to this document found in the factory, a total of 78 units were delivered, including 4 damaged units. It can be assumed that the Jupiter factory was abandoned for good right after that. I believe that the reason for moving the projection to the labs was to maintain the secrecy of the project. With the anomalous activity bringing unwanted attention to the zone, most notably from the army, it was probably safer for the clandestine scientists working in the zone to remain hidden underground. In any case, the technical documentation found in the testing workshop also revealed that the central laboratory is codenamed X8 and is located in Pripyat. We will take a look at X8 in a future video. Furthermore, one of the scientists working on the Gauss rifle was named N. Lebedev. After the zone was formed, we assume that Lebedev and some of his colleagues had an argument with the other scientists, as they could not agree on how to handle the consequences of the disaster. Supposedly, Lebedev left the group and created his own organization, which became Clear Sky. Because he had previously worked on Item 62, Lebedev was able to get his hands on a prototype, which appears at the end of the game Clear Sky. However, the rifle is quite different from the original weapon, as it is not lethal but instead used to disable electronic devices from afar. This version called the EM-1, also has a slower fire rate compared to the standard ghost gun, and is powered by accumulators that allow for 100 shots instead of 10 shots batteries. This makes me believe that Lebedev left the science group before the new developments of item 62 were made, and thus he did not know of the new batteries using artifacts. This is also hinted at by the descriptions of the ammunition themselves. The EM-1 uses accumulators that have no mention of using artifacts, while the Gauss rifle uses batteries that are always explicitly stated to be made out of fragments of the flash artifact. Regardless, Lebedev and his crew were taken into an emission at the power plant, leaving the EM-1 rifle on the battlefield. The recently brainwashed monolith faction probably found the gun, giving them the idea to investigate the old Item 62 project. I think this is why the monolithians visited the testing workshop, and they probably visited many other X-Labs as well finding the precious Gauss rifles in the process. This is why the monolith faction appeared to be unaware of the existence of the weapon during the events of Clear Sky, but they used the Gauss rifle to a large extent by the time of Shadow of Chernobyl, only a few months later. 
I guess they got their hands on the 78 units that were produced, as well as a fairly large stock of batteries. While the Gauss rifle remained a rare sight in the zone, some stalkers did learn of its existence. One example is a squad of loners that set up a scam in the Dark Valley. In previous videos, I have speculated that a projection complex for Item 62 does remain active in an unknown secret lab, providing the monolith with new weapons and ammo. Yet, after making this video, I have changed my mind a bit. Let me explain why. By the time where Call of Pripyat takes place, Item 62 has become even more of a rarity than before. Despite the strong monolith presence in the city of Pripyat, only one Gauss rifle is held by the faction. Besides, batteries for the gun have been hidden by the fanatics in various stashes, making it very precious and limited. These elements make me think that the monolith is slowly running out of resources when it comes to the Gauss rifle, implying that they never built the weapons or ammo themselves. Perhaps they just got their hands on the rifles and ammo remaining in the labs, but did not resume the production. This could be because the manufacturing of the weapon and its batteries requires high-tech equipment, as it is stated in their descriptions. Yet, Cardan was able to figure out the system and create homemade batteries by himself. Sure, his batteries are less powerful, only providing 6 shots instead of 10, but still, this example shows that making simple batteries is possible for a talented technician, something that the monolith most likely has. Well, who knows? For now, we don't have enough information to prove anything. Anyway, that's basically everything interesting that I was able to find about the testing workshop and item 62. Make sure to tell me what you think about all of this in the comments below. As for now, thank you for watching, stalkers, and goodbye.